Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to guide you through uh, an out-of-the-box Mac OS 9 experience. After your Mac boots up, you get to a registration wizard that looks like the one in Mac OS 10. With a little bit less of options, but looks familiar. The button's not being too... My registration should be automatically sent to Apple. Let's see if that still works. Do you want to get on the internet? I know, tell me about the internet is going to crush my capture, so I'm not going to look into it now. I will pause this capture. So let's see. I clicked to tell me more and let's see what Apple has to tell me about the internet. The internet is a worldwide network, blah, 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 blah. And I ac access it for the latest news, entertainment, and software for my computer. Unbelievable. You can also use email to keep in touch with your friends and family. Thank you, Apple. I have to sign up for an internet service provider and dial up modem with a nice cable with four wires inside. Beautiful. I can send and receive emails. Usually it's a local phone call. Time has changed, has passed, I mean. I can see a demonstration how to go to the internet. Show me Apple. Wow, it even makes click noise. Power Mac G4, iMac. Wow. You can click links to go further. Show me Apple. Wow, this used to be the future. The speed of light, Power Mac G4. Yes. Pages have URLs. Incredible. And I can add bookmarks. Wow. And if I don't know how to find stuff, I can go to Sherlock. I can't anymore, but it is there. I can use a mail program to send email. Show me Apple. Outlook Express. Oh, this interface is so nice. No clutter. I love it. Let's see how to write a message. You click new. Ooh. I'm having fun sending email to my friends. I can buy books online. Wow. Okay, let's try to go as fast as we can through this. Remote access status. Aha, it shows the status of your phone call. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. That's it, we are done. I can go back to review and I'm ready to explore the internet. Well, let me stop the recording because exit will crash it. So. We stop. And well, during OS 9 times, the Mac OS was not known for its polish. So after the wizard is done, I go back to a corrupted screen, but I can still use it. So let's see if my registration goes through. I connect using my local area network. I know everything. Next. How would you like to set up your TCP IP connection? DHCP server. Next. Uh, I don't want to enter any of these. Do I have to? Oh, yes, I do. So let me hide this for now. 
This will only take a moment. You are going online. Thank you, Apple. Connect. All right, I'm not sure my registration is sent, but Internet Explorer is opening and it doesn't work. Well, let's get out of here. All right, so now we see the standard Mac OS desktop. The first thing that strikes me is how clean the interface is and how nice the information density is. Now things get bigger and bigger, faster than the screens get bigger. So in the end, you can feel less things, uh, you can see less information every time. And for me, Mac OS 9 is just perfect. For example, on Mac OS 10, you can set up font to side is probably eight points, but with anti-aliasing, it looks horrible. And in Mac OS 9, it actually looks really nice. I have a quite dense monitor. It's around 120 DPI, and it's still super comfortable to read from normal distances. The trash is full. Let's see what's in here. Ah. Oh. Okay, this Mac doesn't have airport, so that makes sense that the airport uh, assistant is not here. We can go to special, empty trash. So what do we see? Top right, the application switcher. Nowadays we use the dock, but before you would use this application switcher here. Clock, date and time, browse the internet icon, that's just an al alias or shortcut to open Internet Explorer, iMovie, iTunes, Mail, that is Outlook Express, QuickTime Player, and Sherlock. Down right we have Trash, down left we have the Control Strip, that can be hidden, and we have some options here. Enable and disable Apple Talk, I don't know why would you disable it, maybe to save power or if you remove an network card, I don't know. You can spin down the hard drive manually or go to sleep. And you can open the energy saver control panel. I'm going to do this later because, well, we're going to go through the control options. We, you can turn on file sharing. So other users using Apple Top can, can automatically discover your files. Security must be horrible. I can open iTunes. Probably if you have iTunes open, you can control the songs that are playing rewind, go forward, etc. You can create a keychain just like OS X, uh, probably save your passwords and etc. Location manager. This is for example, if at home you have, at the time would have dial up, but at work you have LAN, you could choose your location, mark your as food, reassign IPs and etc. Here you can choose your screen result, your number of colors, not resolution, and open the monitors control panel. Here you can adjust the resolution. All of them are 16 by 9, probably the modes that are pushed by the capture card. Maybe I should not have clicked that. Oh, it doesn't make anything. QuickTime options, you can open some QuickTime channels, probably none of it will work. For sure, Apple will not work, even though the Apple trailer page is up. You can see quick time settings, open the picture viewer, on here, remote access. I'm not sure if that is for dialing into your computer or, oh no, that what was the, what the, the wizard was showing before. So this you can disconnect your modem. Yeah. Volume. Here you can choose the source of sound. You can play CD sounds, you can use line in. Mm, yeah, probably if you're recording, that's gonna be useful for you. You can turn on the speakable item, so Mac OS will read what's on, on your screen if you need help. You can start a HTTP server with web sharing and share a folder. On the top left, we have the Apple menu. The use has changed. In Mac OS X, it's only about system functions, but here you can really find programs and etc. 
So first option about this computer remains in OS 10 but shows different information. So here you get your macOS version, your macOS ROM version, the amount of memory installed, and how much memory each application is using. Window widgets, widgets, here you close the window, and here you can turn your window smaller, like the same way as in macOS 10, you adjust the window size for the content that is here, and you can make windows smaller by hiding them and leaving only the title bar visible. If you right click here as I showed by accident, twice, there's no difference, yeah. You get to the folder or application that is being shown here. So you can find the source of what is eating the data. Next option, airport. It's not going to work because I don't have an airport card. Yeah, no card installed, not available. DVD player. Standard issue Apple DVD player. Even the controls are the same as Mac OS X. Business as, as usual. You can even have Dolby here, probably, if you have a compatible player. You can open folders if you copy the DVDs manually. You can open web links from DVDs. Uh. Apple System Profile. That remains in Mac OS X inside the Apple menu, but looks different. So this look was up to Mac OS 10.2, I think, maybe 10.3, with the expandable menus. So on top you have, again, system information, QuickTime version. QuickTime is be a very important part of the system. Uh, memory, so disk cache, 8 megs, amount of virtual memory set, installed memory, how much cache, Machine ID 406, all new Macs since the G3 blue and white are going to be 406, so that doesn't really matter. Number of processors, not that macOS makes any use of them unless you have applications that support it via APIs. Network overview, then you get your modem, the speed of your Ethernet link, version of Apple Talk, version of TCP IP. And some more product information. The review of the ROM, the version, serial number of your computer. And if you do a mass order, I suppose that here you can see the number. Probably my Apple prints it somewhere. Devices and volumes show what's connected to USB ports, how much power it is using, how much power is available. Again, you can see partitions in your disks, just like Microsystem Disk Utility, but read-only, I suppose. PCI slots. This computer has only a video card, nothing else, so you're going to see only video memory and information, all the information uh, related to the graphics card. If you go to control panels, you see here all the control panels that are installed, they are all from Apple, the system is clean. Extension, same. All the drivers that are installed and available. You, iTunes you support different MP3 players. Uh, you have airport stuff. The mouse scroll doesn't work. External CD recorders, probably SCSI. Quick draw, that used to be a thing. Ah, you got the point. Also, you can get a list of applications by clicking on the Applications tab. It takes a while to populate the list. But there we have it. How much memory it uses, the file size. In my case, my memory can be allocated manually. So when you launch an application, you can choose how much memory it's going to take. And yeah, I'm happy to demonstrate this later on. Actually, shows even MacOS 10 applications. That's interesting. Speakable items are all applications as well. It's interesting. 
I used to like to play with speakable items in the past, like get my mail, but well, it's not very reliable anyway. It's a bit lame when the mouse is faster. System folders should show your system folders. Yeah, so you have microOS 9.2.2, now microOS 10. It shows only 10.0 because that was the only release of macOS 10 that was available when macOS 9 was released. So even though I have 10.5, it identifies 10.0. Calculator, same calculator since macOS 1, so does the job, very small. Chooser, here you can connect to servers. So for example, I can connect to my uh, NAS, if I click on Apple Share, server IP address. Here I'm gonna enter the name of the server. Choose the folders I want to see, and they will be mounted on the desktop. Next, we have control panels. Control panels allow you to, well, adjust settings, just like system preferences or control panel on Windows. Appearance lets you choose, change the look of your OS. You have many options. Oh, this is bright, pretty lame. Where is the standard one? Gray space, lollipop, macOS default. There we go. Oh, that's a nice wallpaper. Appearance. Apple Platinum is the only one available. I guess you have other options that you can install. You can choose the highlight color here. Choose the variation. You can choose the certain font. As you can see here, anti-aliasing is only for fonts greater than 12, so my icons remain clear and sharp. You can change your wallpaper. They all seem to be patterns. Let's go for the standard macOS default. Sound. Here you can have the very lame sounds for everything. So whatever you do makes clicks. It's very annoying. I always had to switch off because really it's too much. You click and it makes noises for every single push of any button. Options, smart scrolling, changes the position of the scroll box as they want. Double click bar to collapse windows. Uh -huh. So if you disable it, Double clicking does nothing. Ah, you can have it enabled. Next one, Apple menu options. Well, self-explanatory. You can enable disable submenus. Choose how many servers and items you want to see. Favorites. Your browser favorite pages will come here. Keycaps, shows the keyboard layout that you have. Good if you're trying to find out how to enter some strange characters. Network browser, should allow you to see the servers in your network. Or not, and I hope I'm not gonna crash because of this and regret it forever. Oh, I can quit. Good. So let's quit. Recent applications, document and servers is what we talked about. Remote access status we showed already. It's whether your modem is connected or not. Scrapbook used to be a very interesting place. Application, I mean. You could basically copy or paste anything. Yeah, if you would copy text from browser and a picture from... Uh, part of a movie file, you could just dump everything into it and then paste into all the applications. 
I'm not sure I can demonstrate the functionality now. Yeah, I have nothing here. But nowadays, latest iOS 11 and Mac OS 10.10, 10, 12, 11, or whatever, has the same functionality in the Notes application, so it took them a while. Mac OS 9 could really do it still. Sherlock doesn't work anymore. It used to be a very cool way to look, do internet searches, Alta Vista, ooh. Excite, Lycos, oh. Anyhow, so instead of opening a browser, you could just look for information and try to find it, but it's offline. You could look for people. A ah, huge old apply direct that doesn't sound like a good idea. You could look into Amazon, eBay, so Power Mac G4 probably doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I used to like this program because it's very practical when you find stuff without having to go through all the pop-ups. But well, long gone. Speakable items, that's what I was just describing before. You can tell your computer to tell you a joke. Let's make this louder. No, no. I don't have a microphone, so I cannot demonstrate, but sometimes it would be silly. And again, small widgets, you can make it smaller, resize to the content. For example, if you know the speakable item that works well for you, you can just hide it or make it smaller and then move it away. Stickies got rings created in OS 10.4, I think. Very popular application, lets you write stuff and then remember it later. I think you can copy and paste this into scrapbook. So let's see if I can demonstrate it. So if I would come here, copy, paste here, exactly. And I could add a picture on top of that. An alias? Yeah, only the name of the alias. But you see, you have then a way to organize the objects. Could be QuickTime VR objects, uh, pictures, and even get some metadata about it here and then copy it into do your documents or, yeah, for example, if I look for simple text, that's a very tall standard window size. I could copy from here, here, or drag, copy, or not. Not sure it can handle pictures. Yeah, it is in the clipboard, so I don't know why I cannot paste. Well, never mind. Now, find your options. Not much difference here. New folder, get info, color labels, create alias, delete, that's put away here. Preferences. More or less the same options as you have in the you have nowadays. What you want to see, bigger or smaller icons. Oh, not sure why it didn't apply. Uh, doesn't matter. View options. The view options are the equivalent to the folder view so actually Mac OS 9 works better than in OS 10 that the options that you choose really get stuck to the folder that you are seeing yeah the spatial visual concept of finder in OS 9 works better so you always know where your icons are gonna be if you leave a window out of the way when you reopen it it's going to be there if I move this here and then close it it's going to be there yeah and in Mac OS 10 sometimes it gets a bit screwed. If you have many windows open, 
you can see a list here so for example I have here and you always have the nested folders opening actually un yeah nested like uh, Russian ball maybe and then I can quickly go through windows yeah and in the concepts really like a desktop yeah so there is no expose to help you so you would actually the system expects you to remember where the applications are so if you move this here if you need space you can then move this one here and then you do your other work applications are rarely full screen so you really have a lot of real st uh, state on the screen to do your work and then you reopen when you need grab the data put it in the document or whatever you're doing so it's a very efficient way to work of course the system crashes and and it's not very stable but in this sense it was very efficient to work with the special menu I don't know why I cannot open the disk tray here but you should be able to burn a CD restart the computer shut down sleep balloon help just like Windows used to have some tutorials and help so help looks like you know this hyperlink style help so make help how to expand your computer find information opens very fast used to be very nice way to to see I miss the offline helps like Windows 95 style I really learned a lot about computers Windows 2000 have an excellent has an excellent uh, help offline tutorials mm, no tutorials but yeah if you're really new to the computer you can learn about it here but if you're so bad that you cannot find this information then you're not going to be able to you know get to it so it's a bit useless all right uh, let's go then through the applications applications are part of the Mac OS 9 folder here applications to differentiate from the OS 10 that are called only applications this Mac never came with Mac OS 9 only and it doesn't even include a bootable OS 9 CD so you really to install OS 9 you have to go to OS 10 and then install it from there so you're gonna always see that and of course OS 9 doesn't know much about the folders that are included so you have here spotlight folder you know this Unix hidden folders and files with dot they are all visible uh, for OS 9 no scroll crap even the standard Unix that folders that Mac OS hides here they are all visible yeah so back to applications graphing calculator is a program that I really love and the history behind it is amazing the developers didn't have a contract with Apple when they were staying in the office overnight and using that to show the power of the PowerPC processor at the time uh, so even to support the effort I bought the one for iOS because I just find this story amazing when you really love what you're doing and it's much better than the grapher including in iOS 10 in my opinion so And doing this kind of 3D manipulation based on mathematical formulas and you know drawing it on 3D you know something that really it was not easy to be seen uh, I'm gonna let it run behind us because it shows a very nice face in the end if I remember well network browser we saw already Sherlock we saw that it doesn't work simple text simple text is a very basic text editor as we just saw it doesn't even allow you to do to paste pictures as you know also my ks9 is a horrible multitasker so you can see here that the simulation goes very slowly once not the simulation the rendering of the graphs goes very slowly once another application in the foreground 
because this application that's in the foreground has to release the processor every few cycles for all the applications to do the calculation. So I cannot do this in three times. So so basically, when you have many option, many programs open, you cannot even sometimes listen to music in the background. Maybe Apple had some work around for iTunes, but it just sucks. Simple text is a very OS, classic OS application in the sense that you know there are not even two bars and everything is supposed to be menu driven. So if you want to customize your font, make it with a shadow, everything had to be through the menus. And if you use the application often, of course you would know the keyboard shortcuts by heart, but there is really not much you can do here in terms of advanced functionality. Application specific help is not available, looks like. But it, you can write simple text, that's what it does. I don't want to save. Now, we close simple text, graphing calculator is on the top as you can see here, and it is now rendering fast again. Acrobat Reader, standard Acrobat, Acrobat Reader 5. All the libraries are in the folder, HTML readme file. Yeah, create codes to associate applications with documents was crap. There are no file oh, extensions. So, so you had sometimes problems to open documents if the application that created it was not available, even though you had another application that could handle it. Accept license. Classic Acrobat Reader before it became a bloat. Um, standard macOS, classic macOS fair, small menu bar icons. I don't have any PDF around, but again, a program that used to do the job and now is a bow of bloat. DVD play we saw already, Apple Extras. A notepad, even simpler text, lane sound effect when you turn pages, you can print a note, preferences, nothing, very simple applications. There was a charm of Mac OS, yeah. Um, that's it for notepad. Simple sound, I guess you can. Uh -oh. Well, do nothing. Maybe open some sound files, probably AIFF. Listen to the Apple uh -oh. sounds, alert sounds, my favorite one. Well, does nothing. Airport we saw it doesn't work because I don't have uh, a card. The folders used to have this style for applications and sometimes you see them in Mac OS 10 if you don't buy them from Apple Store but install from a CD. So sometimes you have a nice picture background in the folder and the readme on the top that opens on simple text. And uh, even scripts to configure a network, wow. This used to be cool. Uh, no script editor. Well. Um, yeah, again, association not done properly. This macOS setup from this machine is crap because you just copy everything and things don't get done properly. So if I probably go back to Acrobat, I'm not sure I can drag it in, probably not, I can, yeah, then I can learn about how airport works and open any PDF file. Not sure now if I do this, it gets associated, yeah it does. So this application, Acrobat Reader opens the file and then adds some kind of tag to the file descriptor 
that allows it to be associated with this program. It's a mess. Another interesting thing here, open applications and open folders are highlighted. So if you have a lot of them open, you will remember that they are open somewhere. Back to Apple Extras. Apple Printer Utility. I guess a bunch of printer drivers. Apple Script, that's what we're looking for. Apple Script Editor, just same as Mac OS X. I guess I could open one of the Apple Scripts here by dragging it in. Let's see if that's gonna work. And that's how life in Mac OS 9 used to be. Yeah, it opens. But it doesn't work. It's really easy to get lost, but I guess at the time you would have practiced on this. Colossing extras. Here you could calibrate your screen and create a profile. Not sure what profile first aid will do. Ah, that's also part of your S10 uh, in system preferences, so you can repair profiles. Apple was very aggressive on Apple Script, and I really miss that. So you could basically have everything. And I'm gonna probably copy all those over to really learn from them because now and then I still have to automate a few things. Network interfaces doing something. But I probably should not have done that. Hoping I'm not gonna lose my capture. And a live demonstration of the horrible multitasking capacities of Mac OS. My rendering in the background is totally frozen. I've just forced the profile extractor to quit. And I end up killing the graph calculator. And my mouse is gone. And I think the computer is going to crash. Welcome to Mac OS 9. I'm going to restart and get back to you. Since I'm restarting, you get a happy Mac and the boot process. Oh. All right, we have to wait for that. And we are done. Color changes, you get the extension icon march. I guess none of us missed that. It seems that OS Classic doesn't load anything in parallel, so. Okay, back we are. Mac OS glad to remember the last state of our desktop, a feature that came back to Mac OS only now a few years ago. Again, it's your desk, so it stays as you left it. And that was the whole thing about Apple usability at the time. Since this crashed us, let's get back to eject extras. What is that? Ah. I'm missing that on my computer. I should install that. How do I install this? Um, I can go to the control panel, keyboard, options, no, function keys. Okay, this crap. Can I install this double clicking? To add functionality, place a contest strips module folder. Contour strips modules folder. Let's find that. In the system folder. Contour strips module.
Oh, that's excellent. That's what I was needing. So I drag this here. And probably need to reload this. I want to just create an alias, but this computer is not going to have Mac OS 9 forever, so I just leave it like this. Can I create an alias? Um, that can come here. Excellent. All right, back to where we are. Font extras. Match profile, font sync. I have no idea what this is supposed to do. Let's leave it. Hi Omega. Uh, so I have a, if you have a zip drive or um, SCSI jet drive or something, you should be able to. I had a one gig jet drive. Should be able to configure it here. Language kits. Here, if you are dealing with yeah languages with different alphabets then you can install support here java i guess i'm not going to install this but i should have a classic java launcher beautiful runs like crap Map control panel. What does it do? Ah, you can choose your time zone. Again, that works well on 512 pixel screen or anything bigger. It's just amazing. I love them. And allows you to choose uh, to avoid daylight saving automatically. Okay, not for me. Monitor extras folder. Digital Colometer, this exists in macOS 10 and it looks the same. You point anywhere and you see the value in RGB or whatever value you want to do your color conversions. Yeah. And you can get an average of a bigger area if you like. It does the job. It's useful if you want to copy a cool color that you found on the internet into your document. Metal client, no idea what this is supposed to do. Let's leave it, not interested. Universal access, this is accessibility, so you have closed view that probably does a screen zoom, requires a restart, um, and this probably also has some options for, ah, now that just helps you change the input of mouse and keyboard to facilitate for people with slower movements. Yeah. All right. Next we have Earthlink. Earthlink seems to have classic Earthlink. What does it do? Media. Uh, so every time I open something for the first time, I'm not going to know where the application is. We can force it to open. I don't want to register QuickTime. Earthlink offers two convenient methods of payment, credit card or check debit. Mm. First thing it asks for your credit card, amazing. Capsules. Ah, some internet provider. Here you can install the fax application. Uh, we can look into this, so let's install it. I agree. Let's start. Um, no, no. I'll leave this open here so I can show this program to you later. And let's keep moving on. IDVD. And IDVD is a classic DVD application, but this computer doesn't have a DVD recorder, so Apple doesn't even let you. Uh, open it. So when I get the the um, all the MDD Mac I'm getting, I can show this to you. 
I'm moving, I think this should work. And there's even a, an alias or shortcut here on the desktop. Let's just run it. Loads really fast. Welcomes you in a Apple, very nice Apple way. Movie. We can add a title here. And then no clips because I don't have anything. Can I add another title and transition between them? Maybe. And let's see if that works. Can I cross this off? Hmm, I need to wait for the render to be complete. Can I finish the render? How do I know it's rendering or not? Preferences. Mm, no. This is cool though. You can play the video to the camera, so we'll decide if we don't type. Can I do it now? No, I can. Can I play it back? I can, it plays well, of course. But see, there is interlacing for analog TVs and etc. So it's useless nowadays. Do they have a tutorial? The tutorial is an application with film built videos. I guess for a person who can use a computer but doesn't know how to use iTunes, that could be a good thing. Let's quit. I don't want to save my movie. Let's see... Intent Explorer. I used to like the interface of this browser. I went through it, I think, again already on OS X, on my video about OS X and 10.2. Uh, so basically what I like is this lovely interface where you can have these tabs, save scrapbooks, to page holders and manage information that you find on internet really easily. Apple took a long time to catch up, but now uh, Safari has a lot of the same functionality, like reading lists, and I think you can still copy and paste things and save them in objects in desktop. I'm not sure that works fine anymore, but it used to. So you could Ctrl C text, Ctrl V paste on desktop, and it would be just a generic icon with some object. Internet Utilities, browse the internet is just a shortcut for a browser that doesn't work. Everything is broken on this. Mayo should be a shortcut for Outlook Express, not working, but you're going to see it. Stuff it used to be the standard for compressing things in Macs, uh, but only a trial. Thank you, Apple. and Expander came for free, so you could download patches and software from the internet, and I support, anyhow, and, you know, be able to install them. Here you can see I have a few apps open now. iTunes, let's have a look. Do I accept the agreement? Yes, I do. Do I want to start next? I can use iTunes for everything. You can find my MP3s. And the interface is not a bloat. It's just amazing. It looks for every single file, not only MP3 ones, which is sad. I don't have any MP3s on this computer probably, so I can stop this. Radio Tunnel doesn't work anymore. Library doesn't work, and this is from before you could buy anything online, so doesn't help much. But you can open a stream, convert to MP3, support some internet radios. If you enter the link manually, should, they should still work. Can have some visuals, they used to be very neat. They still work, I think. Here, I can finally eject a CD. Wow, took a while. 
I could put some music CD here now and import it into iTunes. It would maybe even manage to get the names online. You could update your iPod directly from here. Interesting. View options, it could choose what you want to see. Still very simple, still very original Apple-like. Our parents are what? They still remind you, they still remind you of current iTunes, so options to import audio, choose a CD burner, you could make an MP3 CD, so if you had those old MP3 CD players, that would be fantastic for it, choose a burning speed, where your music should be, with the traditional macOS folder delimitation, subfolder delimitation with the colon. Netscape Communicator. My mom uses Netscape to browse, to open her bank up to 2005 or six, maybe even later and it still worked. I really used to like it and it's legacy leave now in Firefox. But naturally it cannot render anything right anymore. But what I like, again, Floating tow bars, Mac like, desktop, you can put it wherever you want, make it small, big, change the shape. Amazing interface, amazing. Outlook Express, so here we are. Standard. Well, I'm not upgrading, I don't have a mail account, I don't want the wizard, but you can see a welcome message with the preview. Not sure this is just rich text or HTML, but you have some formatting options, so it's not just plain text. Uh, news servers were still popular, so I think NNTP, so you could still use them. Not sure even Microsoft keeps them as a news server, probably not. And that's going to probably get me a crash uh, or not. Is it multi-threaded? Yeah, the application is multi-threaded. So I can quit or not yet. Let's see if I can show you preferences. Ha, ah, so there is HTML. If you had the Microsoft Office keyboard, no. Now, if, you use, if I use Microsoft Office to go shortcuts, then you can enable them. So probably Control B or Command B for bold. Uh, Command I for italic and etc. Very customizable, so how many seconds you want to mark the message as read after. So you could just pass through, see the contents, and then get back to it later, and it would really then mark it as read. Um, customize a signature, quoting, yeah, of course, that didn't work. If you have a proxy, you can use that. Get notifications for errors and etc. Probably Microsoft doesn't have this page anymore. We can try or not. Outlook Express is because quite advanced. You only really needed Outlook at the time if you needed to connect to an Exchange server. But if you you only use your personal email, Outlook Express is pretty good. Quick time, it's quick time, the play is still running. It looks the same uh, up to quick time server and still does the same job. Pretty decent. Uh, unlike the newest quick time, you can still play cut videos and, and uh, at this quick time seven could. So cut videos and merge them, which was very helpful. I'd like to upgrade, but I cannot connect. So, too bad. Security. Apple file security probably encrypts, yeah, encrypts files individually. Uh, it's probably now is a laughable standard. Let's see the help preferences. Whoa, that's advanced. Yeah, Apple verifier. I have no idea what it does. 
Well, let me see if I can find some PDF file here. So application OS 9, Earthlink, no, oh, Earthlink. I cannot choose any file. You probably have to verify an encrypted file, so not any file. So that's not what this is for. I, for a second, I forgot we were in the security folder and thought we could be talking about a tool to verify any file if they are corrupted or not. In utilities, that's a printer utility. Uh, don't crash on me. Aha, uh -huh, okay, you can swap printer. Well, not gonna do that. You can burn a disk. Put a disk here, a blank disk, it would probably create a folder. This copy, you could make clones of images and it would tell you, of course, not make a pirate copy. It would give you the checksum to be sure that your file didn't get corrupted. It's too useful to have the old version if you're looking for old programs on the internet. They will come in, uh, in the IMG format instead of G DMG, and DMG and that's the tool to open them. Probably even an older version than that. There used to be a specific version for, for old files. It would see calculate checksum and confirm by verifying it that uh, it was not corrupted during recording and even sign it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, creating a new image would be an IMG file, but still you could have bigger image sizes. Not sure what the maximum size would be, but I assume not more than four gigs. First aid would allow you to repair disks, so that's same verify and repair option that you have in disk utility nowadays, but as a standalone app. Assistance. There's a folder for the assistance of the universe. So you can see the stuff here. Yeah. Anyhow. I'm not making much sense anymore, so let's just get this done. Close everything. That's all. And apparently the only application I have to install really is the fax. So let me do that now. Restart and show it to, to you. Classic MicroS applications installers looked like that always. So you could just choose a destination and sometimes you have customized options here. License comes after. Accept it. Would run a script that you cannot edit anyhow. There is no way. Options. No option, but here would have custom installation to install less components and sometimes you have extra options here the warning that I will need a restart or because you'll be closed so let's do that and stop the recording so I don't lose it the system is back up and there is no clue on where the application would be so let's look into the applications folder ah there's a new folder here facts stuff 6 so let's stop fax. So very Mac OS like. So I could just drag any document and would fax it out. So let's suppose I have a PDF file or a README file here. Does it process PDFs? How come we cannot find it? Acrobat Reader 5, this is really rubbish. It's a clean installation. Let's do it manually. So let's go back to OS 9 applications, Reader, drag it here. Now it loads. Now maybe I can just hide it and then drag it into a desktop fax. Can I quit? Try again. 
too bad. Uh, maybe I need to do the setup assistant first. So let's see. Welcome. The system will ask you several questions about fax software. Uh, Apple bundle fax user. I don't care. Guiding prefix nine zero one. I don't care. Click setup to save the changes. I click. Let's see if now I can do this. So desktop fax. Okay. So in theory, what would happen is a, an advanced user would just create an alias, throw it here in the desktop, and then every time the person would need to print a document, just drag it in. It would launch the application that can read it and probably just create a virtual printer or so. Fax browser. Okay. So basically your computer would answer Faxes even wake up from sleep at phone ring and receive faxes. Then you could double click a fax here. There's no example fax, that's sad. So you could basically then browse your old faxes and retrieve them and you didn't need to keep a fax machine anymore. Most people would have their computer always connected to power, always connected to the phone line and they could receive faxes that way. I've used fax in my life only once to get some study materials from a friend when I was sick, and that was probably 15 years ago, uh, and they were never really popular in my home country, so I think in Japan they still use it a lot, and if that's the case, you can get a G4, have it decorate in your living room, and it will be your fax machine. log file can be moved around Let's close all the final windows and yeah once my other g4 is here I have to it's a firewire 800 so I need to change it to be able to not change it redo the ROM so I can run OS 9 in it it's gonna be my OS 9 and yeah this one I'm gonna probably wipe it clean again to give it to my friend with a clear setup um, but of course I wanted to document it first and that's an overview of um, the whole out-of-box experience for a PowerMac G4 MDD. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.